Stuart George. Proud of where we live. BBC Radio Stoke. Ant McPartlin received Britain's biggest ever fine for drink driving earlier this week, but a Cheshire solicitor, Nick Freeman, says he got off lightly. The TV presenter was fined £86,000. He's been banned from driving for 20 months. So is that enough? Nick Freeman, also known as Mr Loophole, is the solicitor who says no it isn't, and he joins us on BBC Radio Stoke. Good evening, Nick. Good evening, sir. Why do you think he got off lightly? I didn't say he got off lightly. I said he was charged light. There's a big difference. Um, he, he was fine. The fine, in fact, doesn't touch him. And in my view, the charge he faced only reflects part of what he actually did. It reflects the drink driving part, which is that he was driving a car with just over twice the amount of alcohol in his system. It doesn't reflect the fact that he drove on the wrong side of the road, that he lost control going around a corner at speed, and that he collided with two vehicles, causing one member of a family to fear loss of life. Um, and what I did say was, and what I do say, is that he should have been charged with dangerous driving in addition uh, to drink driving. Uh, that, that would have enabled the court to sentence him in a, in a, in a more imaginative way, a, a way that might have been able to combine a punitive and remedial aspect of the sentence, rather than imposing a fine which was far too high, in my view. It's a disproportionately high fine. Um, it wasn't many years ago that the maximum fine for drink driving was £5,000. And what we've tried to do is means test it and uncap it, um, and try and sort of meet justice out by by finding someone a, a massive amount of money, which still won't really touch the sides in terms of his real wealth. But it's less than a week's pay, isn't it? it it's well, the idea the idea is um, his net take home pay apparently it was one hundred and thirty thousand pounds. I don't believe that's the right figure because the eighty six thousand pounds is sixty six percent of one hundred and thirty. Um, the judge would give him a third discount. But the, the sentencing guidelines, the starting point is 150% of his net income and the range is 125 to 175. So I, I think it's possibly been reported wrongly in the media that um, the net take home pay was 130,000. It's a vast amount of money. In my view, it's too much for a drink driving allegation. Uh, and w w what should happen is the Crown and the police should have charged him with actually what happened. He would have then received a community penalty, a community order, that might have contained, contained conditions that he received some sort of treatment, uh, and there would have been a sword of Damocles hanging over him if he didn't comply with that, that order. He would also have to take an extended driving test, which is quite difficult to pass. Um, so it would have been a more constructive punishment, but as, in terms of drink driving, the judge looks at the reading, uh, she has a sentencing guidelines, and there's not a great deal she can do within the parameters that are laid down before her. So that, that's what I was actually saying. Is it common for a drink driving charge and a dangerous driving charge to be done at the same time? Uh, it, it's, it's not common or uncommon. It all depends on the circumstances, and every case is different. And, uh, you know, in this case, I mean, we, we see... Part of the driving, it's all, all been recorded on, on various phones. We see what sort of state he was in driving a car. Uh, and we know that the investigation seems to have concentrated purely on the amount of alcohol in his system. And that's resulted in one charge. Um, and in my view, there should have been other, uh, at least one other charge before the court, the dangerous driving charge, um, which would have given the court an, a different opportunity of sentencing him in a way which is probably more commensurate with actually what happened rather than just part of what happened. To what extent will uh, Ant McPartland pleading guilty and showing remorse have, have helped in terms of uh, bans and, and the charges he faced? Well, it, 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 it won't help in terms of the disqualification because the, 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 the reading that he provided was 75 um, and the range which he fell into was 17 months to 22 months. So the, the judge has given him exactly what the sentencing guideline says, which is 20 months, um, so that the guilty plea doesn't really affect that at all. Um, and it, he will get 25% discount upon completion of the drink rehabilitation course, which again is quite normal. The, the, the discount uh, relates to the fine, and that is reduced by a third. And that's why I said to you at the start, the, the £86,000 is in fact two-thirds of £130,000. Um, so he would get a, a third off his sentence in terms of that. It's not a third off the disqualification, and that's not touched by the guilty plea. What, what happens when you plead guilty is if you're borderline, 
the judge is going to have more sympathy with you and is more liable to be persuaded to reduce the ban to the, the lower level as opposed to the higher level if, if you're on that threshold of one or the other. Just I explain a bit, bit of the legalities of it, if you will, then, Nick, because who decides what charge someone faces? The, the police and the CPS. Initially, the police, and they refer, you know, they're, they're, the CPS are always, is always on standby um, to decide um, whether this is the correct charge. They can rectify the charge. They can do that of their own volition. And I've had so many cases in court, cases where the, there's been a fatal flaw in the procedure, which has resulted in an acquittal, which could have been circumnavigated if the prosecution had looked at the case, uh, spotted the mistake, and then decided to charge something different, which would not have been affected by the mistake that had been made by the police during the procedure. So charging is, is vitally important, um, because, of course, depending upon the charge, it is going to affect what happens to the defendant when he appears in court. And it's going to, obviously, the, 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 the judge or the magistrates, or the, well, the judge at the Crown Court or district judge at the Magistrates Court, that they, they can only do um, what they can within the parameters of the sentencing guidelines depending upon the charge that he's convicted. Now, if he's only facing one charge, their hands are very tight. In this particular case, um, you know, I refer so to the judge being in a straitjacket. She, she more or less was. So that's all she could do. So to be clear, and it makes complete sense when you think about it, a court or a judge cannot charge someone no. for a charge they don't face. Not at all. Not at all. No. Okay. So, what, so what the judge would have done in this case is she would have, in, in terms of what, what she should have done, is, is said, well, he's been involved in an accident, um, and that's an aggravating feature, and that justifies me increasing things. Um, but she doesn't appear to have done that, because the, the disqualification is exactly the right level for, for 75 without an accident. Okay. Um, uh, so it, it's completely by the book without any adverse driving or bad driving. And there was, in fact, quite bad driving on this particular instance. So that, that's why I made the comments that I do. Good to hear them tonight. Thanks for talking to us. Nick Freeman, Mr Loophole, with us on BBC Radio Stoke. And, uh, of course, the, the judge and the CPS aren't here to put their point of view on that subject tonight.